Wisdom now starts in five, four, three, two, one. I'm Mark. He's Gordon, as always. Well, we were supposed to interview Lorraine Day, Dr. Lorraine Day, this week. And because censorship is at an all time high, not only have they taken down her Zoom account because she hosts a Bible study with a, uh, about a thousand people, uh, they deemed the Bible study hate speech. They took down her Zoom account. They won't even let her log into Zoom on her computer, even with a VPN. So censorship is at an all time high. And we just wanted to come on real quick. We'll, we'll get Lorraine Day back on uh, next week. We are trying an alternate platform than uh, Zoom. And we just wanted to come in and talk about the latest things that are going on right now. Gordon, start this thing out. Well, up in Canada, Canadians will be well aware of the fact that Bill C-18 is now taking effect. And the latest outcome of that is that anyone who's on Facebook, aka Meta or Meta, however you want to say it, you Canadians cannot share news articles now on their Facebook platforms. And this is significant because social networks like Facebook have been instrumental in getting truth and exposing things. And the example I like to give is there was a young boy in Alberta, Canada, Nathaniel Spitzer, 14 years of age. He had terminal stage four inoperable brain cancer, was receiving end of life care in a palliative setting. That's where they give you a morphine drip and you can self-administer morphine. Just want to keep you as comfortable as possible because we know you're dying. And two days before this child's fully expected passing, they subjected him to a PCR test. And yeah. surprise, surprise, it came up positive. And then shortly thereafter, Dina Hinshaw, who was at the time Alberta's top doctor. I know exactly who you're talking about. Chief Medical Officer of Health, she held a press conference. This was October of 2021. And she announced that the province of Alberta had, had just experienced its youngest ever death due, due to COVID. The timing is key because that was before the shots became uh, were authorized for children. And now they had their poster child. A 14-year-old passed away due to COVID. And what happened after that is Nathaniel Spitzer had two sisters. And those two sisters knew, Dina Hinshaw never said the boy's name, but they knew that she was talking about their brother. So they complained to Alberta Health Services, crickets. They complained to the CBC, the CTVs, the Globals, to all the mainstream media outlets that were reporting this, and they ignored them. Then they went to the Western Standard, which is an alternative kind of a rebel news type alternative news outlet in mm -hmm. Western Canada, and they ran the story and they ran it up a high flagpole. And what happened was Canadians like myself and others started sharing it, sharing it over Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and the story blew up. Look at this, they're blaming COVID when a kid dies of terminal stage four inoperable brain cancer. And because it got shared so widely, Dina Hinshaw was forced to issue her, uh, something of a retraction. She said, we made a mistake. She said it was an error in judgment. Sorry for swearing. You know, I don't swear much, but I, I'm going to say it. Fucking bullshit. She knew exactly what she was doing. She was weaponizing, propagandizing the population using the tragic death of a 14-year-old to sell a pharmaceutical product. And what happened is the reason that came out was because Canadians were sharing news. And now, now they can't. Now we can't. And so now what happens when they propagandize us with lies, yellow journalism, total disinformation, and Canadians who know the truth and want to get it out there, are not going to be able to do that. And so all that you're left with is the, gover the government's messaging. It's like TASS, 
in the old Soviet Union. It's like the way that the Chinese operate now. It's like Franco Spain and obviously like Nazi Germany. There's only one narrative allowed and that's it. And this is happening in Canada. No doubt it'll come down to your country. It'll spread across Western Europe, Australia, New Zealand. UK. UK for sure. And Americans are fortunate in that your country has state rights. So if you're in a good state, in a state where you have a governor and a legislative, a, a state legislative assembly that, that rests on constitutional protections, on your bill of rights, you're good. If you're living in a state like California with Gary Newsom, Gavin Newsom. I, I would like to call him Gary. <laughs> yeah, I call him, oh, sorry, Gavin Newsom. As, as the people of California like to call him, they call him Governor Newsolini. And, uh, or Gavin Grusom, I've heard also. Okay. <laughs> well, not, There's not, so many for these people. Yeah. But the, uh, the other thing is, too, though, you say uh, with a governor, and I'm right now, yes, I, I get what you're saying. I'm not political. I can't stand any of the politicians, but if it goes to one world and then we go to our North American region, that's all out the door. That's States right. aren't going to have any rights. Well, Americans need to stand up for your, uh, you know, as you know, Mark, I spent ten, almost 10 years growing up in New York, New Jersey, Oregon, and Americans need to stand up for their constitutional right for rights for their Bill of Rights for the Rights Enshrined uh, as a matter of law. In Canada, our constitution is very weak. The government just has to declare an emergency and that falls under the guise of what they call reasonable limits. So all I have to do is say, well, that, that violates my constitutional right to security of the person or to free speech. Well, it's a reasonable limitation on those rights because we say there's an emergency. The government, the government gets to act as judge and jury. And anyway, but uh, Lorraine Day is going to be, that was, you have spoken to her before. You had a podcast with her before years ago. I did, yeah. A couple, a couple of years ago at the beginning of COVID. And she is, just give a little background on her, Gordon, before we uh, end this thing. Yes. Uh, she was highlighted on 60 Minutes, they did an interview with her during the AIDS epidemic. She was a surgeon and she left the profession because of the dangers that she was being subjected to. When she operated, she was operating in what amounts to a spacesuit because as most will know, AIDS is a blood-borne virus. And so it needs to gain, it's carried in bodily fluids and it needs to get into your bloodstream. Well, a doctor with a, a nick or a cut on their foot, surgeons are often standing in blood. And so all it has to do is uh, an infected individual's bodily fluids get into your bloodstream and you would have AIDS. So she left the profession for that reason. And the amazing thing was, and I needed to be reminded of this, during that era, an individual going into a public hospital in the United States could be tested for hepatitis A, hepatitis B, all manner of different diseases. However, it was illegal to require a patient in a, public, in a publicly funded hospital to require them to be tested for AIDS. And so what would happen is Dr. Day would be performing surgery on someone and she wouldn't know whether they're infected with HIV or not. And contrast that to the COVID era. In the COVID era, you couldn't go in to have anything done in a hospital without subjecting yourself to what I like to refer to as a nasal colonoscopy. You had to, you had to get an applicator rammed up halfway into your brain in order to 
if you need an X-ray, if you need and anything. And she came out and said, talked about the dangers of the so-called, you know, Nasal swab test. So mouth people mouth. know her. People know her from that, from her speaking out about that, because she's been well spoken about what's going on. But we're going to mostly touch upon, uh, you know, Christianity and her, and what, her what she, faith. What she's doing now and her... She delves deeply into what is referred to fancy word eschatology, which is just means end times theology and uh, identifying Babylon. She says, uh, she says, it in a, she pronounces it differently than I do. She says Babylon. And I say Babylon it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Babylon, Babylon. And yeah, uh, Babylon is is the one world government it's the who it's wef it's the un and this is the world they want to move us into and babylon in in and this is something we'll get into with dr day is almost obviously in today's world in 2023 there's no more there are no more babylonians per se but there are Babylonians around now, and they are part of this, call it the New World Order, call it the Great Reset, call it Agenda 2030, stick whatever label you want on it. But it's a Babylonian, one world government type system. And Dr. Day is, I believe, when we'll be talking about this, when we talk about end times theology, she, I believe she is firmly of the opinion that we are in the quote unquote last days. How long will that be? I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know. I, if don't Dr. I, I don't believe Dr. Day will be setting any dates, but we'll I don't have, think she does from what, I, yeah. from the interviews and Bible studies that, you know, I've heard. Yeah, so. All right. So stay tuned for Dr. Lorraine Day. That is going to be huge. Yeoman's work again on And she'll Friday. probably be doing most of the talking during that one. For sure. Anyway. Well, we really appreciate this. Thanks so much. Uh, and like, subscribe, subscribe. subscribe. And leave comment away. Comment. Yes. Love the comments. Oh, yes. Great. Thanks so much.